Assalamualaikum and good greeting. So today we'll be watching a video titled Christian Surprises Evolutionist when he mentions this critical flaw. This is from the title, I think you know, this is from a Christian channel. This is from a channel uh, called Living Waters. Um, and I believe he will put an argument against evolution as well as some interaction with those who believe in evolution. Without further ado, let's watch. I'm going to point out a huge blunder evolution believers have made. And I'm also going to share with you one incredible truth that destroys evolution in five seconds. The theory of evolution doesn't pass the scientific method. For something to be deemed scientific, it must be observable and testable. You cannot test something or observe something that supposedly happened 60 million years ago. Evolution is both unproven and unprovable. It has to be accepted by blind faith. But the reason it is so embraced by so many is because it gets rid of moral responsibility. If Darwin was right, then Genesis is wrong in saying that God created man in his own image. And if Genesis falls, everything else crumbles. There's no sin, there's no judgment day, and there's definitely no hell. That means pornography, fornication, adultery, etc. are nothing but guilt-free pleasures there to help us procreate our species. Listen to scripture address the issue of fake science. But look at what it says first. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to your trust. God has entrusted us with the gospel. Make sure you keep it. Don't get caught up in arguments about evolution and forget to share the gospel because it's the gospel that's the power of God to salvation. And then Paul continues, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Opposition of science falsely so called. This is from Timothy. So what is the science here? Opposition of science falsely so called. What does it mean? Evolution is portrayed as science when it's nothing of the sort. If you want to hear profane and vain babblings, just join in a conversation with atheists about evolution and the Bible. When someone doesn't believe they'll be held accountable for every idle word spoken, they'll quickly give themselves to moral depravity. And what's more, in their foolishness, they'll judge themselves as being intelligent. As the scriptures say in the book of Romans, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Here's an interview with a young lady who was totally convinced that evolution was true, but watch what happens. So I believe there is an afterlife just because our, you know, we're the only kind of creatures that are the way they are and our souls are too big to just end and that's it. Do you believe in evolution? I do. So we're just primates. We're no big deal. We're just like the animals. We're beasts. So why would we be different? Well, because there are no other beasts who have done the things that we have, right? We've sent people to the moon, the advances in medicine and science and all that. Or nothing else has done anything of that sort. So ju just to understand what she believed in, she believed in afterlife, so she believed in the unseen. But uh, she also believed in evolution. But she believed we are special. So the contradiction here is... Okay. In terms of the theory of evolution, right? For example, from the faith perspective, from can Muslim accept you know evolution now generally speaking when we just say evolution as it is a, a, a theory not the conclusion yet right meaning that there's some process that we generalize as evolution it doesn't necessarily contradict any fundamental faith in islam except if you conclude that so human comes from a more primitive species prior right that directly contradict because uh, the, the, the how human being uh, uh, created is specifically mentioned and hence if you come up with a different narrative that says that no no human being come from you know it's, it's contradiction but to see that you know uh, some species evolve into some other species because of certain things uh, that does not directly contradict anything Right. So I'm not sure about Christianity, if because the the, the creation of man is is specified, right? So if evolution necessitates someone to believe that man is also within that, of course that is a, a contradiction to I think Islam or Christianity. But if someone believes that yeah, there's such thing as evolution, but humankind is not coming from that process. Meaning, if someone believes as such, it doesn't directly contradict Christianity or Islam, right? Or, or does it for Christianity? Meaning that 
you know the if you talk about animal evolution i'm i'm not saying evolution is true i'm just saying someone who believe in that does it automatically contradict the face of christianity if you can share yeah we believe in justice and truth and righteousness we set up court systems and have judges and we send people to jail for doing things that are wrong none of the beasts do that mm -hmm. why do you think we're like that Probably has to do with like we've talked about evolution, right? I mean, I'm sure from the very beginning we didn't know much. Like the cavemen, they knew very minimal um, living skills. But okay, so in that case, she thinks we are special, but we come from just like any other species, and we evolve until become the special state that we are. Okay, if that is what she believed, then it does contradict, you know, either Christianity or, or Islam. Or Judaism, I, would, uh, I guess so, right? As time went on, we learned more and more. So I think that's what makes us different as opposed to, you know, primates. They're, they've, they're stuck. Do you believe in God? I do. They are stuck. That's interesting. Meaning that... Uh, so this is a question for those who believe in evolution, right? Uh, are, are animals like that no longer able to evolve into something more developed down the road? Or they are still... You know, evolving, because just just wondering whether you agree with how she did, she said it that they are stuck in that state and basically have no chance to become like us, for example. Yeah, I believe there's a God out there. Do you believe the Bible? Some things in the Bible. I kind of have my own religion. Do you respect Jesus? Yes, of course. He destroyed. I can have my own religion. Okay. But evolution with one sentence. Did you know that? Do you know what he said? No. What did he say? In the beginning, God made them male and female. Evolution doesn't say that. It doesn't make any provision for male and female. See all those little drawings they give you as proof of evolution of bent over apes standing up slowly? Remember those ones? Mm -hmm. There's no female there. You notice that? Mm -hmm. They're misogynistic. There's no female in those little pictures. It's all males. If there was a female, where did it start and why did it start? And there's no reproduction without a female. Yeah. And so the Bible makes sense. Do you give any credibility to the Bible? I can't say too much because even though I was raised Catholic and I went to Catholic school and all that good stuff, I. I don't really remember paying much attention to what actually was said in the Bible. Let me give you a synopsis, see if I can put salt on your tongue. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament, God promised to destroy death, and the New Testament tells us how he did it. Did you know that? No, no I did not. You're afraid of death? Yeah. Everybody is. It's horrifying. It is. You lose your mum and dad, you lose your grandma and grandpa, you're going to lose your own life, you're going to be put in a box and buried under the ground. It's a horror beyond words. In fact, the Bible says every human being is tormented or haunted by the fear of death all their lifetime. Right from when we're a little kid, we think, oh, I'm going to die, and it takes our breath away. Mm -hmm. But God's made provision. Do you know how he remedied death for humanity? Mm -mm. You actually do, but you don't understand it. So I'm going to start right from the beginning and see if I can give you a little... Now, <coughs> when you talk about remedy death, right? And to begin with about <coughs> fearing death, the description that he, he took us through is, you know, losing your, your father and mother, etc., uh, being put put in the the casket and put in the ground. So that is the what is painted with this death. Would that be? I mean, will, would the remedy be for that, or is different? I Meaning that we still will be losing family members. We will still be buried underground, but the death that is being remedied is not that right. So. Because the, the way he put the narrative is quite interesting for me because I don't think the remedy is for what he said in the beginning. A little bit of light on this dark subject. Do you think you're a good person? I believe so. I'm going to try and change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> do you think I can do that? I'm open to it. Okay. How many lies have you told in your life? Many. Stolen anything? Yes. Use God's name in vain? Yeah. Love your mum? Of course. Ever use her name as a cuss word? No. Why wouldn't you? She's my mother. And you respect her? Of course. You don't respect the God that gave you a mother. You took his holy name and used it in place of the S word to express disgust. Yeah, so that's called blasphemy. Very serious in God's eyes. Punishable by death in the Old Testament. See, God's standards are infinitely higher than ours. He's holy and pure and righteous. Mm -hmm. We're made in his image, but we live in a fallen state. And the Bible says we loved When 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 Christians say punishable by death, is it the, the death that he just mentioned earlier? That, like, for example, our parents die we die and buried is that is that death that is the punishment the punishment for sin or is it a different form of death to sin 
We do that which is evil in the sight of God. In fact, Jesus called his disciples evil. Did you know that? Mm -mm, I did not. He says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would the Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? Okay, back to those commandments. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Uh, yeah. Do you know what death is according to the Bible? No. It's wages. Wages. Mm -hmm. It says the wages of sin is death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a heinous criminal, committed multiple murders, and he says, you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. This is what we're paying you. And sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. Your death is evidence that God is deadly serious about sin. Okay, here's a quick... Your death... Are we talking about the, the human death? You know, like our parent, our great-grandparent died. Is that death being said there? That death is the punishment for sin. And we will die. And that is punishment for our sin. Is that, is that, because I, I'm familiar with, you know, the, the concept uh, uh, wages of death, etc. But I always think that the death meant there is a different form of death because our death that we are talking about, we will die, we will be buried, etc. That will not change even if you proclaim uh, your, 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 your belief in Jesus, etc. Right? You will still die. Right? But you are talking about you know, something beyond that, right? Whether you will be with God or in heaven, etc. So, if you believe in that form, it's quite interesting if you actually put forth in terms of the fear um, setting up the death that will not go away regardless of whether you accept whatever belief, right? We are created in a way that we will die. That's never going to change. Summation. You said you're a good person. In truth, according to you, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. <laughs> and you're self-righteous and saying you're a good person when you're not. You're like the rest of us. And self-righteousness is a sin in God's eyes. So here's the big question. Mm -hmm. If God judges you... On that one, I think the, the issue, if you want to discuss, right, is the definition, right? What, what you define by good or bad or what, right? right? So because if, you know, having a sin, a um, tendency to sin define you as bad, then no human being is not bad, right? From the get-go, from the definition. By the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four. On Judgment Day, will you be innocent or guilty? Well, I mean, if you're putting it that way, then I guess I would be guilty. But I know I have a good heart. What do you mean a good heart? Tell me about it. Well, you know, I try to make the right choices, and I have compassion, and I'm kind, but I'm not perfect. Okay, hold it there. You're in a court of law, and you've committed a very serious crime. Mm -hmm. Deadly serious. And the judge says you're guilty. So, yes, judge, but I want to tell you, I'm not perfect, I'm kind, and my heart is really good. He's going to say, what are you talking about? I'm not here to judge you on good things you do, or if you think you're good. You're here for crimes you've committed. Mm -hmm. That's what justice is all about. And he said, you've earned your wages. Lying, thieving, blasphemous, self-righteous, adulterer at heart. So if you die in your sins, would you go to heaven or hell? Well, according to everything you said, then I guess I would go to hell. Now, does that concern you? Of course. It horrifies me. I've just met. Now, uh, in recent comments from one of you, uh, you said Christian never basically threat with hell, right? Never put fear into people. It's more of loving God, etc. Because he want to see that Islam tend to, you know, the, the paint that he want to, to put up is that it, what, what the Islamic idea that he want to paint is Islam always stress on fear. Fear of hell, fear of punishment. But there are some videos like this that I think they are from Christian that I think sincerely want to bring people to what they believe as truth, Christianity. But the the core of of what they are doing is instill fear to others, right? Meaning that you meaning from I'm not saying that it's in inherently wrong because if there is something that is valid should be feared. For example, someone is driving hundred miles per hour and you know there's you know the road will end and there's like a, a landslide or whatever that if he's going through ac uh, across a, like a curve he didn't see it but he will crash and he'll definitely hurt and die and then you you, you want to you know stop him and say that there is something fearful in front for example this is not a good analogy perhaps but that fear of 
you know, having a terrible accident if he did not change his course is a valid fear, right? Meaning that you should you, you should feel driving at this speed when there's a high risk up front, high you know probability of, of hurt. So similarly if you know if hereafter is true, punishment in the hereafter is true and what your life right currently is on course to be facing that punishment fear fearing that to me is a valid fear right so i i don't see as a problematic for any christian to to instill that fear in others so that they change their life just as any other religion the problem is whether it's true or not um, you know what is to be feared and the choice to avoid do that that fearful thing i think that's the discussion so i think it is very interesting when some christian comes to me and say that you know why is this quran always saying something about fear god or fear the punishment in hereafter when if that is the truth meaning what is uh, what awaits is the truth shouldn't you fear that right so yeah you, but I'm, I'm horrified at the thought of you, a fellow human being that loves life, ending up justly damned in hell. So this brings us to what God did. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? No. You do know, but you don't value it. Let me see if I can put value on it. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? Yes. What does that mean to you? That he sacrificed himself for everyone. What does that mean? For their sins. What does that mean? How does that affect you? Well, I mean, it obviously brings me sadness to think that someone had the courage to do that well you know no one could have stood up and said well he shouldn't take all the sin because i was part of it too how does that change your eternity uh, i'm not sure there are literally millions of precious roman catholics who each week sit in their church building with an image of jesus on the cross not fully understanding why he died for the sin of the world i'm going to try and make you sure because this is so important you and i broke god's law the ten commandments are called the moral law mm -hmm. jesus came and paid the fine that's what happened on the cross. That's why he said just before he dismissed his spirit, he said, it is finished. He was saying the debt has been paid. It's like being in court. But it's conditional, right? And it, and it, I mean, the, the, when Christian share with me why Jesus died, it is this, this kind of food, right? It's finished, it's settled, Jesus come to, etc. Right? But then, Suddenly, there's a caveat. There's, but, but you have to, you know. So, where does that come from? Meaning that, because if Jesus actually on the cross said that, I come, this is to release all of you from your punishment, except those who don't believe, uh, something like that, right? So, it, it, it at least makes sense from the narrative part. But if the narrative is, he goes there, you know, everything is, you know, all your sins is now gone I, I have taken care of you know i have bear the burden of all your sin and then someone afterwards says that oh, but no 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 but you have to believe in so where does that come into the establishment of you know the rule port with a lot of speeding fines and someone steps in and pays the fines for you the judge says you're out of here someone's paid your fine even though you're guilty mm -hmm. he lets you walk because someone paid your fine Watch now as the law which brought her the knowledge of sin helps her to understand. So someone have paid my fine, right? So I'm 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 free to go, right? Or is it that I have paid your fine, but 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 wait, uh, it will be unpaid if you do not believe in me or some something like that. So that's interesting to me, from the narrative how it is the narrative being built up, right? It is there's some disconnect in my view at least. A fundamental disconnect between what you have said here and then suddenly what you demand or what you are asking to join afterwards. Understand why Jesus died on that cross. Remember the good soil hearer in the parable of the sower is he who hears and understands. And even though you and I are guilty of serious sins worthy of death and damnation in the eyes of a holy God, God can take the death sentence off us in an instant because Jesus paid the fine in full. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death and all you have to do to find everlasting life according to the Bible is repent of your sins. You know what repentance is? So that's an interesting, right? Again, I have Jesus have come to pay it in full. And then the Bible says, you know, there's a condition. Who? Who? Who says? <laughs> meaning, yeah, 
who because only God can put that right so did Jesus say before before he goes that this is conditional I have paid only for only for those who will do this or will say this or will believe in this or he he, he paid in full full stop full stop you know for me alhamdulillah my sin has been paid you know or uh, any buddhist etc will say that thank lord our sin is being paid but suddenly there's a condition so how does that tie in from from jesus meaning you you can argue whatever theologically to theologically you know but where that you know because you claim jesus come to pay in full but suddenly or but not really in full or something you know Yes. It's more than confession. It's when you turn from sin. You can't say, I'm a Christian, but you're fornicating, lie and steal, blaspheme. You've got to be genuine. You've got to be sincere. Mm -hmm. And then you trust in... So, he mentioned the word Christian, right? So, did Jesus die for human or did, did, did Jesus die for Christian? Jesus, like you trust a parachute. At the moment, you're trusting your goodness to save you. Like a man who's going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet without a parachute, he's trusting he can save himself. He's going to flap his arms. We'd say, like, I don't do that. Just trust the parachute. So... Don't look to your goodness to save you, because you haven't got any, you're like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Simply transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. And the second you do that, you've got to... Interesting analogy. So the parachute is... What? Jesus? The, the parallel? Promise from the God who cannot lie because he's without sin. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. You've got a promise from that God that he'll remit your sins in an instant and grant you everlasting life as a free gift, not because you're good, but because he's good and kind and rich in mercy. Is this making sense? Yes, it is. You're going to think about what we talked about today? Definitely. When are you going to repent and trust the Savior? Starting today. Starting today? Mm -hmm. Are you sorry for your sins? Of course. Yeah, I don't go around thinking it's no big deal. I think about it and I know it's wrong. Would you be embarrassed if I pray with you? No. Father, I pray for Isa that this day she'll catch a glimpse of your love for her expressed in the cross and find a place of genuine sorrow and true repentance and faith in Jesus. And this day pass from death to life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I give you a Gospel of John? Sure. Do you know what a Gospel of John is? No. It's the fourth book in the New Testament. Let me grab it for you. You're going to like this. Okay. Oh, interesting. It looks like a bundle of money. Oh. Inside it's the Gospel of John. And the reason it's bundled like that is because it's more precious than all the money in the world because it tells you how to find everlasting life. Do you think you'll read it? Yeah, I think I will. When you start reading it, you'll not be able to put it down because there was never a person like Jesus. That Gospel is about the life of Christ and no one spoke like he spoke. He said, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming when all that are in their grave shall hear my voice. That's a weird thing to say. You're either crazy, a nutcase, or you're God in human form. I think the portion with regard to evolution is ended, right? This, this uh, little part is more preaching towards accepting Christianity, basically. Uh, yeah. So, back to the analogy of parachute. Do you think that is a good analogy for what he's trying to you know, convey and bring the girl to? Uh, because... Yeah, the parachute is the savior from, you know, you feel free fall down to the ground, you know, <laughs> you, you know what will happen, right? So the parachute will save you from that kind of drop, right? But in, the, if you bring back to the original narrative, right, you, you cannot say Jesus, for example, as the parachute or believe in Jesus as prof parachute because, um, the whole structure of you falling to the ground and what will happen when you you know the the wages of sin is death that is designed if you want to put jesus and you say jesus is god right so jesus as god as the parachute the parachute is the one that created you know that in the first place so you have to find energy where you know something else that that <laughs> mirror the parachute is the one to begin with that dictate if you fall and you to the ground you'll definitely you know splatter and die but at the same time you now become the parachute <laughs> so i'm not sure what analogy is good for that if you can think of any i would like to 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 know because then we reiterate the analogy and see how it goes because right now at the beginning you say that the entity itself god itself that is dictating that sin death and then now you should me say, look at me as the savior i love you so much i sent jesus right uh but you you 
uh, as if you forget the in implication of the first part right so the parachute is the one that dictated you will die but now you should think you know you, you you understand what i'm saying right so yeah um feel free to suggest and good analogy for the narrative anyway so with that thank you for watching see you next time